everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 28, so I'm going to be talking about the books that I think I'm going to give a 5 out of 5 star rating next year. So yesterday for Bookmas Day 27, I talked about all of the books that I own that I haven't gotten the chance to read yet, or my TBR pile. It's a pretty big pile, and I've got a mix of different books on there, but I will have that video linked down below if you wanted to check it out, and in case you missed it, as well as the entire Bookmas playlist so you guys can get caught up if you have fallen behind. But today I thought it would be fun to talk about the books that I think I will give 5 out of 5 stars when I do finally read them. So. There were a couple of ways that I could do this one and I decided to do a combination of the two different ways The one way is to take books that are releasing in 2021 that I've pre-ordered or plan to read and Talk about the ones that I think I will give five out of five stars out of that And the other way is the books that are on my TBR pile no matter when they released that I hope to read next year and think I will give five out of five stars when I finally do read them So I will be starting off with the unreleased books and then moving on to the ones that I actually own and have on my TBR pile. It's really hard to try and predict what I might give 5 out of 5 stars, but I think it's going to be really fun to look back on this video once I do finally read these books, which will hopefully be soon and actually be next year because we all know that sometimes when I say that I'm going to read a book, then I just end up putting it off forever and ever and ever. Case in point is carry on. But honestly, I really do think that these books have a great chance of being read because I think that I am going to love them. Now, I don't give five out of five stars lightly. It's not something I do very often, and I don't know if it's because I'm just like afraid to give a book what seems like a perfect rating, although it doesn't mean that a book is perfect by any means, but I'm just always hesitant to do it. So I give a lot of like four and 4.5 out of five stars, but I am going to try and be like a little easier about giving five out of five stars because I think if a book I really loved it, then I should give it five out of five stars. Now I do try to go into books without any expectations, but it's inevitable that I will have expectations. I generally have an idea of how I'm going to feel about a book when I actually pick it up based on how I like the synopsis, if it's like how much it fits to my taste and how similar it is to other books I've loved. And also there's obviously the major factor of other people hyping it up. So that kind of makes me think it goes one of two ways. Either I think I'm really going to love the book and agree with the hype because it sounds like something I would love or I think I'm going to be disappointed by it. So I talked a lot for this intro, but I just kind of wanted to explain it a little bit more, I guess. So let's get into the actual books. So the first of the books that are coming out next year that I think I'm definitely going to love and probably give five out of five stars is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. So there's a couple of reasons that I think I'm really going to love this book. One, it is by Casey McQuiston. This is their second novel and their first book was Red, White, and Royal Blue, which definitely took the adult romance world by storm. It has continued to be talked about and so hyped up, like even a year after its release, it is on my most hyped books of the year list. And I totally agree with that because everyone has been talking about it and it is for a good reason. I also really loved that book. Has it been one or two years now? It may be out for two years. I can't really remember because this book was so hyped up leading up to its release and then after and like, it's just been hyped up ever since basically its inception. But One Last Stop is another romance and you follow a character who finds out that their subway crush is actually from the 70s and is stuck there so there's kind of like a magical twist to it as well I think so she has to try and do everything that she can to save her but also is trying not to fall in love with her in the process because the time travel thing is obviously going to complicate things just a little bit so this is a sapphic romance and honestly I just think I'm going to love it I love Casey McQuiston's writing so I think this is definitely going to be a success next is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas the second this book was announced, I went and pre-ordered it because I wanted it in my hands immediately so badly. But Angie Thomas is the author of The Hate You Give and On the Come Up. She writes amazing novels. They have such great family units. They manage to be fun but also have a really hard-hitting element to it as well and I don't think this one is going to be any different. The reason I'm so 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 excited for this one is because it follows Star's father from The Hate You Give. So you follow 17 years early 
earlier, a young maverick who is trying to help his family and the only way that he really knows how is to deal drugs for the King Lord. So he starts doing that and things get a little bit complicated when he finds out that he actually has a son. So the stakes are even higher for him to make a living and take care of his own. I'm just so excited to see these characters again, to get to see a younger version of Maverick. I'm excited to see like how he came to be the person that he is in The Hate You Give and I just think this is going to be such a great book. So definitely probably a five out of five stars. Next is The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. After enjoying Beach Read so much, I knew that chances are the next book that Emily Henry is going to come out with, I will read and really enjoy. And when I saw the concept for this one, I got even more excited for it. So this is about the main character who has one week to win back her best friend who she just so happens to also be in love with. That's a trope that I love. And she's actually a travel writer. So she plans this whole trip. I love traveling and the idea of a travel writer, like her other book was also about writers, her other adult romance. And this one is another adult romance actually. She also writes in YA, but this is her next adult romance. And it just sounds like the cutest thing ever. I love the idea of a travel writer and this trip and then also a friends to lovers thing. Like I just, I have very high expectations for this and I'm hoping it'll be kind of like Beach Read in the way that it was a really cute and enjoyable romance but also had a deeper thing going on there. So I'm not sure what that deeper thing might be but I'm kind of hoping that it will have that. Either way, definitely excited for this one and think it's going to be great. Next is With You All The Way by Cynthia Hand. So I've had pretty good luck with Cynthia Hand's books that are a bit more intense. I kind of like, she has an older trilogy that's about angels that I have mixed feelings on, but it kind of is representative of what YA was at the time and it's not really to my taste anymore. However, she has been coming out with some really great hard hitting contemporaries. The How and the Why is one that I actually own and is on my TBR that I think is definitely going to be a five out of five stars. I'm pretty much anticipating but I have talked about it quite a bit so I left it out of this video so it's informally included here but with this one it deals with virginity and that's kind of the central topic like it seems weird but sex is kind of a main topic like the main character her boyfriend cheats on her and then she finds out her mother is having an affair when they go to Hawaii so I think this book might be set in Hawaii but they go there for the surgeons conference and she finds out there that her mother has been having an affair and also she She's really tired of her older sister just always telling her what to do and one of the things is to like protect your virginity so she just kind of says screw it if you will and she's like I'm just going to lose it and be over with. I think this is going to be a really interesting discussion about that whole concept and I feel like this is going to be a cute romance once again but also have something a little bit more emotional going on in it so I'm interested to see how this topic is going to go because I've never really read a YA contemporary like this, but I do think that it seems like a great topic for one. Next is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. This is by the author of Cemetery Boys, which came out this year and came out with a big bang. It definitely was very, very hyped up and I read it and loved it. It was on my favorite books of the year list, so I definitely think it's worth the hype. And this is actually a fantasy by that same author, so interested to see what they are going to do with that different genre. I think it sounds great. I guess now thinking about it, Cemetery Boys is definitely fantasy, like it has a fantastical element to it, but I believe that this new one doesn't have any basis in reality. So kind of getting Peter Pan vibes. I don't know if it's formally a Peter Pan retelling, so I don't want to say that it is, but I would say that it's definitely inspired by Peter Pan. Like, I feel like it's, I don't know, I just feel like if I say it's a Peter Pan retelling and it's not, you might have expectations, but I definitely think it is like totally inspired by Peter Pan because you have a character named Wendy, there's Lost Boys, and you have a character named Peter. So like these things are definitely combining to give me Peter Pan vibes. But one, this also has like such a beautiful cover, but there is the main character, Wendy, and her brothers disappeared and no one really has talked about it. But now there are other children that are starting to disappear 
and Wendy ends up running into Peter, who warns her that if nothing is done, then these newly missing children are going to meet the same fate as her brothers. So she kind of gets wrapped up in the mystery of their town that she wasn't really expecting to be. So you can kind of see where I'm getting the Peter Pan thing from here. I just like, it doesn't say anything in the synopsis, so I don't want to give false expectations. I'm just thinking like Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier, everyone was saying was a Mulan retelling and then it wasn't. So that kind of made me not like it. So I'm always hesitant there, but I'm super excited to see more from this author. Next is An Emotion of Great Delight by Tahara Mafi. So Tahara Mafi is the author of Shatter Me. She is an au the author of, what is that book called? Why? Because I feel like it has a similar title. So now I'm going to keep on getting these mixed up. I have an autographed arc somewhere. I just can't find it anywhere. What is that book? A very large expanse of sea. Okay, I'm sorry. I totally blanked on that. But she now is coming out with a new book that kind of is more similar to A Very Large Expanse of Sea than it is to Shatter Me because Shatter Me is like dystopian and these are contemporary novels. But this one is set shortly after 9-11. So it's set in 2003 and America has officially declared war on Iraq. There's a lot of racism and hatred that is being thrown around and you follow a Muslim main character who doesn't really have the time to deal with that because she's dealing with a lot of other things in her personal life. Her brother has died, her father is dying, and her mother is completely inaccessible. So she's just kind of spiraling and this ultimately follows that storyline. I think this is definitely going to be as it is like an emotion of great delight. Definitely a very emotional story but I'm also hoping that you will get to see some character growth here from this main character and I think that it is a story that it's definitely different than a lot of other contemporaries that I've read, but one that is super necessary. So I love Tahara Mafi's writing and I'm really looking forward to this one. Next is Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert. So this book I had no clue was happening and then I found it when I was looking for books that I might pre-order and I was like, oh my goodness, I need this right now. So it is the book from the book, The Hazelwood. Do you follow that? So in The Hazelwood, that is a fantastical story where there's this book of fairy tales that the main characters grandmother wrote and it's like this very cult following I guess fairy tale book and it's super prevalent to the storyline of that series or duology rather but I tend to love books like this where you take a book from a book and then you get the stories from it. I'm saying books so much that I literally am getting so confused. But what I mean is like Tales of the Peculiar by Ransom Riggs is a collection of like fairy tale stories that are newly made up that connect to the Miss Peregrine series and I love that. And similar story to A Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo which is connected to the Grishaverse. I just love when there are original fairy tales that are made up to match with a bookish universe if you will. I feel like that was the best way to explain that but I did a really bad job of it. So I think that these fairy tales, I am super excited to read. I'm going to kind of probably save it for fall because I think they're going to be spooky and eerie and perfect for that time of year, but I'm so excited for it. Next is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I love Christina Lauren, you guys know, and this is their latest release. I'm kind of sad this one is coming out in hardcover though, to be honest, because I just, one of my favorite things about romance books is that they come out in paperback right away because I have a ton of hardcovers, but I actually kind of prefer paperback. Like it depends on the book, but I just find for readability, I really love paperback. And I just love the floppy ones that adult romances come in, but they decided to do a hardcover for this one which kind of just makes me sad, but that is entirely besides the point. This story follows a single mother, which is kind of different for them. They've never had a mother as the main character, but she is raised by her grandmother and now her grandmother is helping to raise her great grandchild now, or the main character's child. But the main character is a data and stats wizard and just understands numbers, but she's not really interested in dating. However, when this dating service comes out that uses DNA and like science and numbers to match you with your perfect match, she suddenly is interested in it. So she ends up actually being matched with the creator of this app and you see the relationship develop. I think this app idea seems really cool. Definitely, I have 
enjoyed some books that I've read, like adult romances that feature apps and those sorts of things, so I think this could be an interesting twist on things. And the final book that is coming out this year that I wanted to include on this list is The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. Brittany Morris is the author of Slay, which I was totally blown away by when I finally read it this year, so definitely made me super intrigued to see what she was going to come out with next, and I was so excited when I saw that she had a 2021 release on the way. So this book is going to be a very difficult read, I think. It follows the main character, Alex, who whenever he touches something, an object or a person, he sees its fate, he sees the future. So for example, when he like touches his car, he sees his car underwater. And when he touches his girlfriend, he sees them breaking up. But what sets this whole story going is he touches his brother and he sees his brother's in imminent death, which is obviously like such a heavy burden to bear knowing that your brother is going to die and he has to try and do what he can to prevent what is going to happen. I am so intrigued by this topic and I think that she's definitely going to do a great job with it. Okay, so now for the books that I actually already own and want to get to soon and think I will probably give five out of five stars. You're probably wondering why I just haven't picked them up yet, but I think part of that is because when I think I'm going to give a book a high rating, I'm scared to read it almost because I don't want to be let down or disappointed. So it kind of, it makes it take a little bit longer, unfortunately. But first is I Want to Be Where You Are by Christina Forrest. This book is about a ballerina who wants to go to this audition for this ballet conservatory that she has dreamed of going to, but her mother forbids her from going. But she decides she's going to go anyways. So she sets off on this road road trip, but her annoying neighbor ends up stopping her and demanding that he goes on this trip with her, with his dog, or else he's going to tell her mother where she's going. So they set off together and I think it's going to be funny, fun. I've been loving dance books recently, so definitely have high expectations. Next is Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. I have put this book off forever. It is the sequel to Skyward, which I read two years ago now, and this one came out last year and I just it has been a time trying to read it. As you guys know, it was included on many TBRs, but I want to try and get to it in January probably because I need to like, I just need to read this dang book already because I love Skyward so much and I think I'm really going to love the sequel. I was loving it when I started reading it, but then I put it down, can't remember why. So I'm expecting that this will be something I am really going to enjoy. And I think maybe that's why I haven't picked it up yet. Partially is because I really want to have the time to to dedicate to it, but I also, I loved the first book so much that I don't want to be let down by the second. Next is Early Departures by Justin A. Reynolds. I read Opposite of Always this past year and was super surprised by how much I really enjoyed it. And this is going to be another kind of twist on contemporary, which I think is what this author is going to be known for, and I'm totally here for that. So in here we follow our main character who he hasn't, his best friend, they've been kind of estranged for a couple of years now, but then his best friend ends up dying and he there's this new healthcare technology that will reanimate him for a short period of time and he decides to do that so then he can hopefully repair their relationship. Definitely going to be a sad one dealing with grief and loss of friendship and obviously like actual death so I'm kind of scared to read this because I think it's gonna be sad, but I'm really interested to see the story about friendship because I feel like you don't get a lot of that in YA and I think that's going to be central to it. So I'm looking forward to that. Next is The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. So I have a tendency of, you probably got from this video because there happens to be a lot of them on here, but I always feel like I'm going to love contemporaries that are also emotional. And it's not that like they make me cry or anything or I want to be sad. I just love when there's a deeper meaning to a story as well. And I think this one will definitely have that. It follows a main character whose boyfriend died a year ago and she's finally going back to school. But she has a plan in place to convince everyone that she's totally back to normal. And one of those things is to get her old crush to date her. And she's just kind of like trying to push herself out of her comfort zone to try and show people like everything's fine even though obviously it's probably not. So another story I think is going to deal with grief centrally and I have heard some great things about this book. It has been out for a while now so I want to see why it has such longevity and I just I don't know something about it I feel like it's going to be a success for me. Speaking of stories that kind of connect to another bookish world next is The Lives of Saints by Leigh Bardugo. I just feel like I'm going to love this knowing how much 
much I enjoyed The Language of Thorns. This is kind of similar because it is actually the book that the main character, I can't remember her name at all, is it Alina? I don't know, but she owned this in the first book of Shadow and Bone. So this just has like one, beautifully illustrated, two, it just has stories of saints and miracles and like origin stories. I just think that Lee Bardugo's writing really lends itself super well to that sort of fantastical, mythological style of story because she did such a great job with it in Language of Thorns. So I'm really, really, really excited to pick this one up. Next is Nocturna by Maya Moitain. So this seems like a super cool fantasy story that I'm eager to read. It's set in a Latinx inspired world and you follow a face shifting thief and a risk taking prince and the two of them teaming up to try and save their world. It just seems super cool and definitely I'm looking forward to finding more out about that world and what it might look like because in my head it's really nice. Next is Passion of the Dolsa by Julie Berry. So Julie Berry is the author of Lovely War which was my all-time favorite book of this year. So I have had her other historical fiction on my TBR for longer than I've had Lovely War actually and I had heard amazing things about this one before I really ever heard anything about Lovely War. So I don't know why I haven't actually picked this one up but it is set in the 1200s actually in Provence, France and you follow the main character who has a magical ability but she is being hunted by this friar who is determined to burn her for heresy. Definitely the number one reason why I have such high expectations going into this book is because of Lovely War. Part of it also is because I've heard such amazing things about it but definitely Lovely War has me like super looking forward to it. And finally is 13 Doorways and Wolves Behind Them All by Laura Ruby. I feel like most historical fictions and contemporaries that once again have that emotional element to it, I always think I'm gonna get five out of five stars. Don't know why. But this is a dual timeline, I believe, historical fiction. The synopsis for it is kind of confusing. I know that it follows two women, one is living, one is dead, and it's set in like the end of the Great Depression, the start of World War II, and you have characters that have been orphaned. So this, once again, is an, uh, actually a National Book Award finalist and I find that I tend to have really good luck with National Book Award finalists or winners so that also kind of makes my expectations a little bit higher. So those are all of the books that I am predicting that I will give five out of five stars when I finally read them next year. I'm going to make a super effort to try and get to every single one so then maybe for a book miss video next year I can look back and see what I did actually give five out of five stars or if I read any. I definitely don't want it to be like my 2020 TBR video that I did at the end of Bookmas last year because I never read any of those books, which is very sad and tragic. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to join me tomorrow for Bookmas Day 29. So I kind of gave you a little taste in today's video, but I'm going to be going over all of my most anticipated releases for 2021 tomorrow. And I'm so excited because there are such great books that are coming out next year, let me tell you. And like right now it's only really the summer and spring books. Is that? No, winter and spring books that have been announced. We don't even know what's coming for summer or fall. So I just can't wait to see what's going to happen in the latter half of the year because this first half is shaping up to be really great books wise. But don't forget to click that subscribe button as well. I will be putting out a new video every single day for the month of December. We are almost at the end, shockingly, but there is still more to come. So you can also click that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post. Even after Bookmas, I post videos either two to three days a week. I'm not really sure about that. I need to make a decision, but basically I post consistently. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please let me know what books you think you are going to give five out of five stars that are on your TBR or are coming out next year. But I will see you tomorrow with another video. Bye.